Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and part two of our series on how to buy clothing at a steep discount online. In today's video, I show you how I put together an outfit that retails for $4,315 and I just paid $255 for it. And I also show you how you can do it on your own so you end up with something at a very steep discount. <laughs> Now looking good and having nice custom-made suits and bespoke shoes when you have a lot of money is relatively easy. On the other hand, if you're on a really tight budget, it can be a lot harder. Or that's at least the common perception. Growing up, I didn't have a lot of money and so I had to learn to make my dollar or my euro go further. I started using eBay in 1999 when I was 14 years old and I quickly learned the ins and outs of it. So how do you get a really expensive outfit on a tight budget? Well, the key is to shop for pre-worn, gently used items. In part one of this series, I already shared with you all the tips and tricks I learned since 1999 on how to get men's clothing on a budget. I'll share my entire step-by-step -step process in that video. So today, I take the theory explained in part one and turn it into practice. And I'll show you how I got a summer outfit that retailed for $4,315 for just 255 bucks. Honestly, you can do it too, and I'll prove it to you by showing you three different combinations that evolve around one jack. Summer's here, and while you can get better deals buying winter clothes during the summer season and vice versa, I decided to get a summer outfit during summer to show that this concept even holds true when it's a little more expensive. When you buy an outfit, you should always start with a jacket or a suit because that's the most expensive item and the most difficult one to get the fit right. First, I look on Facebook Marketplace, on Poshmark, and on Etsy, and then finally on eBay, and eBay had by far the best selection. Armed with the knowledge of all of my measurements, I looked for a jacket in a 42 or a 44. I also knew that I wanted something that was summery, ideally with patch pockets to underline the casual character of the jacket. I wasn't really interested in a suit and went for a combination. All the principles I outlined in part one work just as well with a suit though. So after going through many listings, doing some searching, comparing measurements, I narrowed it down to two jackets that ironically even came from the same vendor. One was a light gray pinpoint jacket from Borelli, which is an Italian brand, and it had nice three patch pockets, a three roll two style with notch lapels and side vents. The fabric was a wool cashmere blend, which is usually pretty soft, and a jacket from Borelli retails about 1,200 euros, which is about 1,300 US dollars. The eBay list price was $119.99. The photos looked good, the jacket looked clean, there was no damage, and the description confirmed that. The next jacket that seemed a good fit was from Isaia, which is also an Italian brand from Naples. Today, they're mainly known for their red line and their smart marketing with a piece of coral, which is commonly found in Naples as part of their lapel pin decoration. Now, Isaia also has a budget line called Gianluca Napoli. And so a lot of people get it confused. But I knew that before they had the red label, their main line was the Gianluca Isaia Napoli. So I knew quality-wise, this was the same level as the highly regarded red line. That's one of the reasons it's so important to build your knowledge about brands if you want to find good deals online. I think Isaiah switched to the red line labels in around 2006, so I knew the jacket was about 15 years old. Some people may be put off by wearing clothes that are 15 or 20 years old, but if the garment is hardly worn and has been stored properly, you always get a very clean, timeless silhouette in classic men's style, so you can never tell whether the jacket is two years old or 20 years old. Now, even if I had not known about the details of the brand, I could recognize the finely sewn handmade buttonholes with a silk thread, and assume that it's a quality jacket just because of that, because it's not something you'll find on inexpensive jackets. And typically, if they put a lot of time and effort into the buttonholes, they do the same with the rest of the jacket. The original list price on eBay was $139.99. Again, it seemed to be in great condition. It had this beautiful pastel green color, and I liked it, and so I watched both of the jackets, both the Borelli and the Isaia. Both of these listings weren't the traditional auction, but a buy it now. But when I watched it, I got an offer from the seller for both jackets that was below the list price. Now I knew he was motivated to sell, so I sent him a message asking if he would give me both of the jackets shipped for $150 if I bought them together. Because that saves him on shipping and he gets rid of something and he agreed to that. 
Both jackets arrived just stuffed in one priority mailbox, but when they came out, they had hardly any wrinkles. Generally, that's a sign of a nice fabric, unless, of course, you get maybe a linen garment. If you want to learn more about linen and why it wrinkles so much, please check out this guide here. If you want to learn why wool doesn't wrinkle as much, you can check it out here. Now, sadly, the Borelli jacket had actually a little stain in between the buttons, which wasn't in the pictures and wasn't mentioned in the description. So I reached out to the seller and he was like, well, I can give you a $10 refund, but that's usually not enough to go to the dry cleaners. And even if you agree to that, you don't know if the stain is actually gonna come out because it may have been set in the garment for a decade or longer and you just don't know. He also offered, of course, to take it back because it was their fault. And so I agreed to send it back to them for a full refund. Even though both listings had the same measurements, the jacket fit differently. I felt that the gray one was a bit longer and also wider in the shoulders. The green one fit me much better. So keep in mind, just because someone provides measurements doesn't mean they're 100% accurate. And trying them on and seeing how it works for you is the best way to determine if it's right for you. At the same time, the measurements really help you to dial things in so you don't end up with stuff that you just have to return. Right out of the box, I could see there was nice handwork underneath the collar, and even the sleeve had a typical Neapolitan kind of waterfall sleeve head or sleeve wrinkles. The fit of the green Isaiah jacket was really nice. It had high armholes, there was a good range of movement, it felt extremely comfortable, and it looked quite good out of the box without any alterations. Except for the sleeves, because they're on the shorter side, but I knew that because typically my sleeves are about 25 and a half inches long or 26 inches. This one was listed as only being 25, but I knew that I could let it out because it was in good condition. Also with higher end jackets, there are usually more fabric reserves. So I could maybe try to have the sleeve lengthened from the top, but you need a very skilled alteration style to do that. And it's typically also more expensive. Now, if I just let the sleeve out at the bottom, it probably cost me around 50 bucks at the alteration style. Normally I wear garments for a little bit just to figure out if I want to let it out and by how much, but for this jacket I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it. So now that I have my jacket and I knew what it looked like, I could continue with the pants. First I picked up a pair of Polo Ralph Lauren seersucker pants because they're very lightweight and summery. I also found one that didn't come in a typical blue and white color, but in a beige and white color. I figured it would look quite nice with a green and create that summery feel I was going for. Of course, I wanted to show you some different outfits so you don't think this was just a one-off thing, but I truly believe that you can repeat this process and get the same results. So I got a second pair of pants, which is kind of a brownish cavalry twill, which is a little heavier than the seersucker, but still appropriate for summer. And then I got a pair of Glenshek pants in a cotton fabric, which is rather unusual, also in kind of a brown tone. Both of those were vintage Polo Ralph Lauren. I think one of them came even new with tags. They retailed for $125. The Cavalry Drill one cost me $37.50. The other one only cost me $17.99. Shipped. And I say that because sometimes a listing can be five bucks, but then the shipping costs 23. So at the end of the day, what matters is the full amount you pay. So not a jacket and pants that would work with it, I could select the right shirt. In the process, I bought a bunch of different shirts because in this series, I wanna do just a video on shirts and what you should look for. So stay tuned for part three and four. For the seersucker pants, I wanted a casual look, maybe something in linen or maybe a denim shirt. As a general note, I think finding pants and jackets that are very gently used pre-worn is relatively easy. When it comes to shirts though, a lot of pre-worn shirts are worn heavily and sometimes completely worn out. And they may be nice brand names and people just put them on eBay because someone is gonna pick them up because of that. But ultimately, even if you have a shirt that retails for $1,000, if it's worn out, it's worn out. And even if you get it at just 20 bucks or 10 bucks, you can't wear it, so it's worthless. Because of that, looking very closely at the pictures in the largest version possible is key for shirts. Typically, a shirt wears out at the shirt cuff. If you have a barrel cuff, it's usually at the edges first. If you have a double cuff or a French cuff, it usually starts to wear at the crease on the cuff where you fold it. Also, you can look at the tip of the collar because that's where it typically wears fast or at the upper edge of the collar where it wears second. 
Of course, if you see stains in the armpit area or around the collar, you know that this shirt has been worn a lot and it's probably not something you wanna invest your money in. For example, I bought this nice looking striped shirt from Borelli, which retails for about $300, has a lot of handwork, the fabrics are really nice, and it was advertised as being in great condition without any visible flaws. And when I got the shirt, the collar tips were already worn and so were the edges of the sleeve cuffs. So I knew the shirt was almost at the end of its life, so I returned it. So for this outfit, I found a denim shirt from Eaton, which retails for $195. One thing I like about Eaton is that they have longer sleeves and I have longer arms, so it typically works for me. And their slim fit is very attractive. It's not boxy, but it's also not super slim, so it works for me. In their red line, they also have nice fabrics and they often treat them with an anti-iron coating that is much better than other stuff you can find in the industry. They don't have much handwork, but the buttons are sewn with Escalite, so I know they never come off. Overall, the fabrics are of very good quality. At the same time, it's not a brand that everyone knows, so the listing price on eBay was just 25 bucks for a shirt that was in pretty good shape. I made an offer and got it for 20 bucks shipped. Because it has a casual button-down collar and overall it's a very casual combination, I decided to skip a tie for this outfit, but I wanted a pocket square and I added one from eBay, which cost 15 bucks. It's no name, but it worked color-wise with the shirt and the jacket. Next up, I needed shoes, and you can find tons of high-end brand shoes on eBay. I wanted something in a lighter brown or tan that would work with a summery outfit. I found a pair of Merman in Cognac Tan, and Merman is a brand that is, in general, relatively inexpensive for the value and quality you get, so you're not gonna make a huge savings in general, but it's still a good brand and still a good shoe, and you have to kind of see what's available at any given point in time. The shoes retail for $195. They were an auction format. I won the auction for $56, but with the shipping, it came to $70.32. The funny thing was when I got the shoes, the seller added a note and said, thank you very much for all the videos. I really appreciate the Gentleman's Gazette. So that was a funny side note. And when I liked the color of the shoes, I was wondering if I could make them even nicer. And so I sent them over to my friend Preston Soto from the Elegant Oxford to give him a nice shine and look. When they come back, we'll give them the way to one lucky winner. They're a size 10 UK on the Hero Last. So stay tuned for the giveaway. Now at this point, all I needed to finish the outfit was basically a belt and socks. And for belts, the Cognac Tan one from the Fort Belvedere belt system with extensional buckles worked really well, but it's a little more expensive because it's really high quality and you can exchange everything. So for the purposes of this video, it wasn't a good fit. I looked around to hopefully find something that was roughly in the same color, which can be difficult because the photos are sometimes shot with a different white balance. So even though they may look the same in the pictures, they may actually not look the same when you get them. To learn more about how to match your belt with your shoes and your other accessories, please check out this video here. But in general, I just wanted something that was close enough. So I got a belt from Polo Ralph Lauren for 30 bucks, which retails for $75. Nothing special, but it does the job. Now I'm a size 36 belt. If you're smaller, like 30 or 28, you can find tons of belts, sometimes even alligator for like 30 bucks, which is really incredible. For the socks, I bought a pair of new Falke socks, which is a German brand. I got them for 15 bucks. They retail for about 20 or 25. They have some polyester in it and they're not as nice as my Fort Belvedere socks, but I truly wanted to put together an outfit that was very affordable and that had no Fort Belvedere items in it. All right, now that you've seen the outfit, what is the retail price breakdown and how much did I pay for it? Well, first of all, the Isaiah jacket was $3,695. The Searsucker pants had a retail price of $120. The Eaton denim shirt retailed for $195 and so did the Merriman shoes. The pocket square, I just left at $15 because I didn't know and the belt was $75. With the socks being $20, that gives us a total of $4,315 retail value. So what did I pay? $75 for the Isaiah yeah jacket, $30 for the Ralph Lauren pants, $20 for a shirt, $15 for the pocket square and $70.32 for the shoes. The belt was 30 bucks and the socks 15. So that adds up to $255.32, which is the equivalent of 94% off. 
Now, even if I account for the $50 in alterations costs, I go up to $305.32, which is still 93% off. Again, this wasn't pure luck, but it's the result of a process. And because of that, I used the same jacket, but made some changes for the other items to show you that it's actually true. I switched the Seersucker for the Cavalry Twill, and the retail was 125. I got them for 37.50. Instead of the denim Eaton shirt, I got a white Eaton shirt for 20 bucks, which also retailed for 195. The tie I bought for five bucks shipped from eBay, and it's a nice blue and yellow striped tie, very thin in a kind of summery fabric. It came from a brand called Personality Milano, which I'm not familiar with, but it probably retailed around 20 bucks. For the pocket square, I could have found a white linen one probably on eBay, but I already have really nice ones from Fort Belvedere, especially with the hand embroidered initial and the hand rolled edges. So I just use that and the retail price of that is $65. When it comes to socks, I'm a big sucker for two-tone socks because they're so easy to combine. And so I picked a pair of Fort Belvedere socks in navy and yellow, which picks up the colors of the tie and it retails for 40 bucks. Of course, you could have also found a new pair of socks, maybe striped or otherwise on eBay for less. So the total retail value of this outfit is $4,410. I paid $342.82 for it. And that includes the Fort Belvedere items at retail price. Still, that's 92% off the retail price. If I account for alterations, which was shortening the hem of the pants 15 bucks and the sleeves of the jacket 50 bucks, it is still a great deal. Now for the third outfit, I wanted to incorporate more patterns. So it shows a pair of pants in a Glencheck pattern, which was brown and light brown, and I thought it worked really well with a jacket. Retail price 125, I got it for 17.99 because it was used and it was described as a herringbone pattern, which is not true, so the seller didn't know about it, but I looked at it because I saw the picture and I liked it and I got a deal. The shirt I picked up is from Luciano Barbera, which is not a really well-known brand, but Mr. Barbera is a really good dresser and has an impeccable sense of style, which is also reflected in his clothes. While their shirts don't have the same level of handwork detail, such as a Borelli or Keaton, it's still a high quality shirt that uses very nice fabrics. Also, they have little details. For example, the sleeve folds that you can see up there, which should help you give more movement with a smaller armhole. The shirt fabric is really nice. It has these kind of green and white stripes with elements of blue with kind of a hint of purple. For the tie, I chose a green one with a really oversized polka dot in white, which is very summery, has a linen texture. It retailed for $125. I bought it on eBay for five bucks. You can tell it's an older tie because it's much wider, about like three and a half inches. And right now, that's not what you would find because they're slimmer. For a pocket square, I went with a no-name linen one that had really small dots in beige and a contrast edge in beige that would pick up the color of the pants, but also the polka dots of the tie and thus tying everything together. Also, the dots on a pocket square are a lot smaller than the dots on a tie. So it all works harmoniously together, even though they're all different patterns. For the socks, again, I went with a pair of two-tone socks in brown and green that picked up the green colors and the brown colors and tied everything beautifully together with the shoes and the pants. To learn more about how to put together shoe, sock, and pant combinations, please check out this video here. So if you add up the retail value for this outfit, you get about $4,560. I paid $266.29, and if you add 50 bucks for the alterations, it's $316.29. Again, huge savings, way over 90%. Naturally, it sounds great to get such a big discount, but you always have to be honest with yourself and ask, how much time did it take me to put together this outfit? And how much could I have earned during this time? Or what would have been the spare time worth to me if I hadn't searched for that stuff? That math is different, of course, for everyone, because some people earn more, others like shopping, others hate it. So it's something that you have to come up with and add it to the overall cost. For me, it took me about 12 hours from start to finish, including the returns of the items, to search for things, compare them, communicate with the sellers, get them, and so forth. So that's a not insignificant amount of time in my mind. Nevertheless, if you're on a very tight budget and you can invest a little bit of time you can get great results and huge discounts. With that being said, please let us know if you enjoy this format in the comments. 
I could think about doing a video like this for an interview outfit or a blazer outfit or a fall winter outfit, for example. So let us know, we'll always try to serve you. If you want to support the videos we do, the best way to do that is to buy stuff from our shop. If that's not part of your budget, you can also support us by becoming a patron starting at just $3. Thank you very much for your support. We appreciate it.